Thank you, John and Helen, and welcome again, Umilola. Umilola Oshikoya is a fountain of knowledge on the topic of wealth and has over 18 years' experience in finance and investment banking. She's the Chief Knowledge Officer of the Tech World of Finance, a financial education platform. She's also a UK certified life coach who also developed the Wheel of Wealth methodology, which made her the first wealth coach in Africa. Omilola has written several books, amongst which are The Richer Woman and The 10 Steps to Being Debt-Free. After all the years of hearing about you, Omilola, it is great to finally meet you. Yay. And I'm so, so happy to be here with you. Thank you so much. So let's delve right in. You have been with John and Helen for the last segment where you explained how to create wealth. And that's fine. But for me, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing for me is sustaining wealth. Because the way I see it, what's the point of having a life of luxury or rather living a life of luxury? And then one minute, it's all gone. And you're back to living from hand to mouth. So what would you, would you agree with me when I say sustaining wealth is more important than creating wealth? I strongly agree, and because I, I do have a personal um, story that ties with that, I come from a very, very wealthy home. Mm -hmm. My granddad was extremely wealthy. I mean, just one of his portfolios, one of his companies was, at the time, was the only company making cement sacks for all the cement companies in Nigeria. So you can imagine how much wealth that was, you know. I mean, he also founded, funded um, the, most cu the currently most widely read newspaper for his younger brother. So you can imagine the kind of money he had. Mm. But when he passed away, we went through a series of financial challenges. As a child, I, I saw that and it wasn't great for me because also my parents kind of had a tumultuous marriage. So I, I felt money was the issue, mm. you know, and we had struggles. At one point, we could be we homeless. And when I say homeless, not that we lived under a bridge, yeah. but we just couldn't pay rent. My father, we had a, we always had, my grandfather always had great investments in real estate, so we always had a, like a mansion to live in a nice area, but there was no cash, so yeah. my dad thought it wise to rent the big house and get a smaller house, yeah. which he did, and made sense until the landlord of the smaller house wanted to sell the house and we couldn't buy, we couldn't yeah. move back to our own house because yeah. it was rented and he yes. didn't have money at the time to pay yes. two years rent somewhere else. So. Yeah. We were in limbo, and I think what really struck me as a young child was that it was actually a family member that bought the house that rendered us homeless. Wow. So I had to go live with one of my aunts, and my parents moved out of town. So that was what kind of drove me. I mean, my only goal in life was to be rich. Yeah. To, I wasn't even interested in getting married or having... It wasn't a goal. It was yeah. being rich, you know. Yeah. But And it almost cost me my marriage, which is why yeah. I, I have this whole view of wealth not just money it mm. almost cost me my marriage i faced temptations in my marriage it's the whole story is in my book so i feel like it's not and then even for me personally i knew how to create wealth so i got into investment banking mm. and i was making lots of money i also had side hustles in mm. terms of i would sell corporate um supply corporate gifts to companies um i would sell arabian tunics and sometimes my side hustles would bring me more money than my Mm. monthly salary but then I was living from paycheck to paycheck because I wasn't financially intelligent I was trying to keep up with the Joneses not realizing the Joneses are broke <laughs> also at the time it was all about I was always in all these style magazines so it was always about I could not be caught dead wearing the same outfit twice wow. you know and I would spend so much money and make up on hair at the time Brazilian hair not this one that is just very affordable and you know um, wearing expensive clothes got a car loan that I had no business in, you know. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you because you, what you've just, what you're narrating is 99% yes. of every human being's yeah. life. Yeah. So back to the question of, okay, there's the wealth. Clearly sustaining it was the problem. Yes, that was the problem. And if you look at the likes of, and you look, I worked in finance, so it's mm. not a function of, you, you have people that work in finance and are not financially educated. Very true. You have the likes of Michael Jackson. It was said that over his lifetime, he made over $700 million, but he was about $500 million in debt when he died. Mm. 
mm. because he just didn't understand the correlation between how much he was earning and how much he was spending. So tell me, how do you understand the correlation? So that? first thing is you need to be financially educated. So there are a couple of things you need to do. Mm -hmm. It's almost like when you get to a hospital, you know, you first of all have to do, do a diagnose, diagnosis to know what is wrong with you. So even with finances, even before you start thinking about how to create wealth, know what your status you're in. Do a financial intelligence test. What's a financial intelligence? Let's, let's dumb it down. Yes, yeah, so a financial intelligence test is just a couple of questions you need to ask yourself to know how educated you are, to know if you understand financial. So just little things like, even to, do you have a savings account? Do you understand investments? Do you take, are you risk, are you conservative? Are you risk averse? You know, I mean, do you, are you in debt? Would you take on a loan? Okay, Those I'm are going some to, of the questions you ask yourself. I'm going, I'm going to interrupt you there because those are very important things, but that covers more of the financial planning and financial intelligence. And we can talk about this thing on finance and wealth forever. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to double back to the sustaining the wealth part. Let's assume that I am 50,000 50, income earner. Mm -hmm. I, know what, I don't know what's financial intelligence. I don't even care what financial intelligence is. But I have some savings, you know, and I want to sustain my wealth and potentially double it. How do I do that? So that's the point. You, you cannot escape it. That is the problem. That's why there's poverty in Nigeria is because we, we, we don't know. So if you know, if you do the financial intelligence test now, mm -hmm. it's all about answering those questions. And if you have more yeses than no's, then you're okay. But if you Where have... Where do I get that test from? I'm it's a driver. It's available if you are aware. If you, How am I going to become so aware? So you need to understand that you need to know, you need to be financially educated and unfortunately we need to start teaching people from schools that is the problem this is why let me tell you something this is why you wonder why the rich are always getting richer while you're out there buying iphones you know what the rich i have a friend who's a teacher in the uk and she also is a personal teacher to very um, wealthy people i mean someone like joe malone the, can the candle maker mm, yes. is one of is someone that she's close to on their birthdays, they're not buying their children Chanel bags and iPhones, even if they probably have. They're buying them shares in Chanel, shares in, in Apple. You see, so you first of all need to understand, do I even know anything about finances? Then if you know you don't know, then the thing is, okay, now, how do I begin to learn about these things? There's a lot of free information out there. What level are you in the financial life cycle? Do you even know what a financial life cycle is? Okay, but what's going to make me back to... I'm a driver mm -hmm. or I'm a domestic help. Mm -hmm. What's going to make me even have that conversation? I don't even understand what the word finance is. All I know is that I get my salary. I have 10 dependencies who are waiting to collect money from me. I don't know what finance is. So how are you going to tell me? Which is, and that's why I have this mission. And in, again, that's why I set up this um, the world of finance, the tech world of finance, an online financial education platform where we break down complex financial terms to as simple as ABC. Okay, break it because down for me. Because people think, when you think of, so for instance, at the earlier segment, when I talked about money, when I broke it down to value, it made simple yes, sense. So we break it down and we have over 250 articles from over 27 contributors. We have online, because we have everything there that is there for you to read and understand is basic. It's not just for the rich because the rich are educating themselves and coming out of the, and they're getting richer. But the poor are constantly just thinking about how can I buy a better, better pass my neighbor? How can I do all these things? How can I, once I have money, you're thinking about how to deck yourself up. But if you look at Steve Jobs, he was always wearing a black t-shirt and blue jeans. And I'm not saying you should be frugal and you should not look nice. Do mm. I not look nice? Do you understand? Mm. But you see, that you need to understand that. You need to make your money work for you. You need to, so for instance, things like it's important to save. And people will say, I need to have one million naira before I save. Mm. No. If you do not save when you have 10,000 naira, 1,000 naira, trust me, you will never save when you have 1 million naira. It's Very about true. building financial discipline and knowing, having good money habits. It's the same way 
That's why you find that the people that win the lottery today, that you find out that they're broke. You find out mm -hmm. that athletes, musicians, you wonder they're one hit wonders. Mm -hmm. uh, mu you know, musicians in lots of wealthy families, the, the wealth does not last a generation. It's because they do not understand this principle. So when you have built, when you know that if I have 1,000 naira, if I save 10% of that 1,000 naira, or also my 10,000 naira, when you have 1 million naira, because you know you need to save, you will do that. Because if you don't, when you have that 1 million naira, more money, more problems, you're going to start thinking of, hey, uh -huh, now I want to deck up. I want Very to buy true. this. Now I want to do this. You know, meanwhile, the rich are not using their principal, which is the main money that they have, to buy all these things you see them buying. Half of the time, they are using their interest, which is the money they made from their principal. Or the likes of Kim Kardashian, what they're doing is brands are giving them those things to wear that you're using all your money to buy. Very true. Very true. And you know what I discovered about the rich even? They don't use their phone, um, what's it called? The airtime to make calls. Did you, well, you use WhatsApp? Thank you. When I realized that every time I called one of my clients, a couple of my clients who are seen as the creme de la creme of Nigerian society, it was always WhatsApp they called me back on. Because I started doing the same thing. Let me give you an example. Um, I remember uh, a friend of mine um, who started a business, she, she was talking about, so she, Flying Doctors of Nigeria, Olara Karen, I love her so much because she's, she understands these things. And she talks about how, look, when you're even starting a business, it's better to start with very little capital and be innovative. So, for instance, when she started Flying Doctors of Nigeria, she wanted it was a. It, um, she came to Nigeria because moved back to Nigeria because her sister died in Nigeria. Um, they weren't able to fly her out to mm. get you know there was no flying ambulance at the time. So she started to start flying ambulance services. But to start a flying ambulance, you need like a private jet. Mm. She didn't have money to get a private jet. She was a young 20-something year old girl. So what did she do? She began to be innovative and she began to think that there's so many, you know, private jets in Nigeria mm. owned by people. Half of them are just in the hangar yeah, waiting. Yeah. And I, I, in one of the projects I worked on in investment banking was um, a business jet service. Do you know, it's more expensive to keep your, your plane on ground yes, than flying. Yes, so she is. decided, you know, well, let me go and meet this um, owned airline, um, private jet owners. She didn't, it's not even as if she had connections, but she, because she was, you know, you always find a way if you're innovative. And she let me go and meet these guys and tell them that, you know what, well, let me bring your jets in a pool. Yeah almost like the Uber model. And you know what? Why don't you earn money while your jet is flying? So if there's an opportunity for her, someone comes to her and says they want to fly someone else of the country, obviously they will pay first. So let me just assume they pay $40,000. Mm. They pay first. And what she will do is she'll find out whose jet is available. Mm. She would have negotiated the leasing amount and pay and lease the jet, get the jet, fly the jet. So she didn't even have money, need money to buy a plane. Do you understand? But because she was innovative, she's talking about, so when she then began to make money, she's not excessive in even things like paper. She's mm. not wasting paper mm. because she understands that you need to manage your finances. You need to grow your finances. You need to sustain this money. Whereas somebody that probably got a lot of capital immediately will be like, ah, we're making money now. Let's buy, it. Let's buy everybody, mm. you know, G-Wagons. Let's, you that's know. The, that's, that's our Nigerian mentality. When I, when in 2008, I was, thank God, you know, because I had just, I was in one investment banking organization and I moved in October 2008. The global financial crisis was in November 2008. The company that I moved from, even though they were one of the top performing investment banking institutions at the time, they literally almost had to fold up and sack everybody. Wow. I was lucky I moved. The company that I moved to, when they were making money, when there was a boom, they, were, they, had, they went and they diversified their income. So they weren't just doing asset management. They diversified to other asset classes and had other businesses. So guess what? Guess how they were able to sustain? They didn't sack one single staff. They, did not, they were not delayed one single salary. They always paid on 22nd. Do you know why? How? Sand. From one of their real estates, they were able to dredge sand and able to sell sand. They sold over a billion naira worth of sand. Sand. And that's how they were able to get money. This, that's the money that they used to sustain their company throughout the recession. Okay, so what I've heard from you is, one, you have to have savings. That's step one. Savings. Step one. Savings just preserves it so it doesn't mm. grow your wealth. Mm. It just 
preserves your wealth. Mm. And even with savings, they are a methodology. So have a separate account for emergencies. Mm -hmm. So when there's an, an emergency, you're not dipping into your savings. You know mm -hmm. that if something happens to a family member or your car or something, there's hospital, you have an emergency fund, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be three to six months of your annual, three to six months salary saved in, yes. as emergency. Yes. And you should have some that is, you know, liquid. Maybe the first three months you can easily get cash mm -hmm. because if there's an emergency, you need mm -hmm. to go and withdraw. Mm -hmm. And another maybe in like a fixed mm -hmm. income mm -hmm. where you know it's fixed and then you earn a higher interest. I'm going to interrupt you again. Okay. You know why I'm smiling? You kept saying to me, I know you guys are going to want to have me to come back again. <laughs> and let me be very honest. You want me to come I, back? No, again? no, no. I, I was like, yeah, sure, because I know that would happen. But I was like, ah, oh, my liar. <laughs> so bold, you know? But listening to you now, I'm like, I get it. This is a huge conversation that we can't even capture everything in the small time frame we have. So I, I cannot wait for you to come back again. <laughs> and I will then, I, because I, I, want us to, I want us to look at the steps. So that's why I was saying savings for me, from what you've said, is the first step. Mm -hmm. Attached to that is having financial discipline. Mm -hmm. And then one of the other things you said is you have to be innovative mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you have to learn to diversify. Mm -hmm. So if we were going to look at short, medium, and long term, yeah, what are, the, what are the steps to being able to sustain wealth? Okay, so I'll do that quickly. I've talked about managing wealth, which is things like savings. You need to budget as well. Ensure that you live on a monthly budget. If you're, if you're a family, you should have a family budget. If it's a business, you have a business budget. Um, we have a lot of budget information on my platform. And then also insurance is good as well. So I'm, now I'm talking about preserving your wealth. You know, you need to be able to insure so that if something happens, at least you're, you're, you don't have to dip into your pocket. The insurance company can, you know, pay for that. So mm -hmm. that's all. I mean, those are some of the ways you can manage your wealth. Then you now need to grow it. Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing to preserve it. It's another thing to grow it. Mm -hmm. To grow it, you now need to start thinking about things like investments. Mm. Investment is growing. I mean, even going back to even savings, there's something that we need to understand, compound interest. Albert Einstein says, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who knows it, earns it. Who he doesn't, pays it. You know what compound interest is? Essentially, even when you put your money in, let's say, even say savings now, for instance, mm. Mm. the money that you earn as interest, instead of going to spend it, put it back. It helps your money grow faster. Ah. Yes, yeah, so it's compounding, you know. So that is savings. But like, again, I talk about savings just preserving. It's not growing. Investments, you need to begin to invest. So when you invest, you think of investing in things like the stock market, mm. which is basically just buying sh shares, being, owning a part of a company. Mm. Do you understand? So owning mm. a part of a company. Mm. And you can do this in different ways. Many people think, again, that you need to have big money to start investing. You can start with 2,000 naira, 5,000 naira. Oh, really? Yes. There's this amazing thing called a mutual fund mm. that was mm -hmm. created. A mutual fund is essentially, instead of you, Farrell, saying you want to buy shares in Coca-Cola, Guinness, and different companies mm. going directly, mm. all you need to do is take your money, give it to a fund manager, which mm. is who is someone that, that's what they do, that's what they're trained to do. Mm. So they take money from Farrell, from John, from Helen, put it in a basket, and invest it in different products. So mm. that way you are even diversifying. So you are being exposed to you not just Coke, but mm. Coca-Cola, Guinness, and all these different companies. Mm. And at the end of the day, they give you a return. Do you understand? And what this means is that you don't need, literally need to be working and looking at the stock market. They are doing that for you. Yes. They have the experience. And you can start with... They have some as little as 2,000 naira, some as little as 5,000 naira. And mm. you can grow, you know, you can grow in that way. If you want to do real estate, it's very easy to go into real estate. You don't have to have so much money. Yet. You can start off with your friends, form a, an investment club and decide to, that both all of you are going to invest in real estate and start from places like Moe, mm. you know, or far into the one of the fastest growing axes in, in, in Nigeria now is the Lekki Ekpe Expressway. All that way because that's why you see like the refineries, the Dangote refineries, the Lekki Free Trade Zone. There's so many things. So you can even start as far as, as Ekpe, you know, or Ibeju Lekki and buy land. Eventually, mm. 
as the thing it appreciates so fast. Mm. You sell it, mm. then you move to Lekki. Before you know it, you move to Koi. Mm. You start. That, you know. You, you know the interesting thing is this goes back to what you said at the beginning: financial discipline. Because again, it's interesting you're saying that. I do have um, money market funds. I do have the other one guaranteed something, mm. but I haven't been disciplined with it. When I need emergency money, that's where I go to. So you should have an emergency fund for emergency money. That's which should be separate. So you know what your financial goals are. Mm. What is a goal? A goal is a dream with a deadline. Your goals should be smart. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time bound. So I don't just say I want to pay debt. Mm. I want to pay my 1,000 naira debt by 31st of December 2021. Also, debt, do, I mean, now moving away from growing your wealth, do not take on debt. Do not take on debt. If you take on debt, it's like going on a, in a journey with carrying a heavy luggage. You most mm. likely wouldn't get to your destination, but that's another topic. For another that's day. another topic. So in fact, I've written in terms it down. Of investments. <laughs> You know, we've talked about investments. Then also, let's talk about even multiple streams of income. And when I talk about, I talk a lot on analogies. I'll say um, the ocean is the analogy for wealth. Why is it that the ocean, uh, which is why I say wealth is too big. I mean, only 5% of the ocean has been explored. But why is it that the ocean constantly has water in and out of season? Because there's seven sources of water that flows into the ocean. Wow. We should have at least seven sources of income, multiple streams of income. But I will take it a step further. In the pandemic, you know, I talked the other time, I said I'm very spiritual. And in prayer, God was saying to me, I'm taking you away from multiple streams of income to endless streams of income. You can begin mm. to earn. The ocean is endless. Mm. Endless streams of income. And technology has done that because you can begin to earn dollars, pounds, yen, whatever currency from your house. When Australia is sleeping, you can be any money from the US. When Australia is awake, you can be any money from Australia. You, someone like you, you have presenting skills. Mm. You're a presenter. Why don't you create an online course? Mm. How, 10 steps to one, the 101 of presenting. Put it out there. People pay you from all over the world to learn how to present. Okay. And on that note... <laughs> <laughs> Time has gone, right? What? <laughs> we have this to get like, started. We have to. We have to. <laughs> My new book, Journey to Wealth, is coming. You have to, everyone has to get that book. I break down everything in that book. I cannot wait to read it. I really cannot wait to read it. And I cannot wait to have this conversation again <laughs> for a longer period of time. No problem. Wow. Thank you so much, Omelola. Thank you. Thank you for As having in, me. The confidence yeah. that one exudes when you know your onions mm. is i think is one of the most powerful things ever and you know your onions so i'm so so excited that we even got this few minutes to even have this conversation and i can't wait for us to have it again so thank, thank you. you so so much thank you. for coming on and for talking with us about not just sustaining wealth but a lot of bits and pieces around money management and wealth. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, up next is our fitness instructor, Dolly Phillips. <laughs>